Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about these things, solid state drives or SSDs. Specifically, I'm going to explain all of the different SSD form factors, interfaces and technologies. So, let's go and get started. For many years, almost all computers stored their operating systems, programs and data on hard drives, with 3.5-inch models being most common in desktop PCs, whilst 2.5-inch drives were found in most laptops. However, today, an increasing proportion of computers use an SSD instead of, or in addition to, a hard drive. SSDs store data on solid-state flash memory chips, which makes them faster, more power-efficient and more robust. This said, the cost of storing data on an SSD is still greater per gigabyte than using a hard drive. Today, SSDs come in many different sizes or form factors, with the most common being 2.5-inch and M.2. As we can see, 2.5-inch SSDs are the same size as 2.5-inch hard drives, and they connect to a computer using a cable, which plugs into a connector on the end of a drive, and then the drive then mounts with screws. Meanwhile, M.2 drives usually slot directly into a computer's motherboard, and come in a variety of sizes that are expressed as a code. For example, this is a 2280 M.2 SSD, which means that it's 22mm wide and 80mm in length. And this is a 2260 M.2 SSD, which is therefore 22mm wide and 60mm long. Other possible dimensions for M.2 devices are 1630, 2230, 3030, 2242, 3042 and 2210, although not all of these are used for M.2 SSDs. When purchasing an M.2 SSD, it is of course critical to get one which will fit your motherboard, although it's worth noting that many motherboard slots can accommodate several M.2 sizes. While 2.5-inch and M.2 SSDs are the most common, other form factors are available. Not least there are a few 3.5-inch SSDs, such as the Nimbus ExaDrive DC100. With a 100 terabyte capacity, this is currently the highest capacity SSD on the market and is a very high-end enterprise device with a $40,000 price tag to match. Also at the higher end of the market, we find AIC or add-in card SSDs that plug directly into a PCIe slot on a computer's motherboard. These also come in different sizes, and most usually HHHL, which stands for half height, half length, or FHHL, which stands for full height, half length. Examples include the Samsung PM1733 and the WD Black AN1500. Note that there are also PCIe add-in card adapters that allow one or more M.2 SSDs to be plugged into a standard PCIe slot. A final, fairly common, if older SSD form factor is mSATA. This was defined in 2011, before M.2 was specified in 2013, and can still be found in many laptops and other mobile devices. However, this all said, today if you are purchasing a new SSD, it is most likely you'll be selecting a 2.5-inch form factor drive or an M.2 drive. SSDs are available with a variety of different interfaces, with the two most common being SATA and PCIe NVMe. SATA stands for Serial Advanced Technology Attachment and delivers a maximum data transfer speed of around 550 megabytes a second. Meanwhile, PCIe stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, with NVMe, or Non-Volatile Memory Express, being as standard for connecting SSDs via PCIe. You may see SSDs labelled as having a PCIe interface, an NVMe interface, or a PCIe NVMe interface, but today all of these refer to the same thing. Maximum data transfer speeds for NVMe SSDs are up to 7000 megabytes a second for the latest drives connected to computers with a PCIe 4.0 interface. Now, 
it is very important to appreciate that an SSD's form factor does not determine its interface. Very frequently I read comments here on YouTube that say things like M.2 SSDs are better than 2.5 inch SSDs because M.2 drives are faster, and this is not always true. For a start, M.2 SSDs can have either a SATA or an NVMe interface. So, for example, here this Western Digital M.2 drive is an NVMe drive, but this Transcend drive is a SATA drive, and so operates at the same speed as most 2.5 inch drives which have a SATA interface. This said, there are 2.5 inch drives that have a PCIe NVMe interface, known in this context as U.2. The connectors on SATA and U.2 2.5 inch SSDs do look fairly similar, but they are not identical as this graphic shows. Examples of 2.5 inch SSDs with a U.2 PCIe NVMe interface include the Kingston DC1000M and the WD Gold Enterprise Class NVMe SSD. It's also worth noting that some 2.5 inch Enterprise SSDs come with a serial attached SCSI or SAS interface that can provide data transfer speeds of up to 1200 megabytes a second or twice that of SATA. Now, because SSDs with the same form factor can have different interfaces, it becomes very important to purchase the right drive for your system if you want it to fit and work properly. When purchasing a 2.5 inch SSD, you should have no problems in practice, as all consumer drives have a SATA interface, with U.2 and SAS connectors being rare on most motherboards. You're therefore very unlikely to purchase a U.2 or SAS 2.5 inch SSD by accident. The same, however, is unfortunately not the case when it comes to M.2 drives, with many reported instances of people purchasing an NVMe M.2 SSD when they needed a SATA one, and vice versa. So it's incredibly important to check just which kind of M.2 SSD your system supports. Today, most new motherboards have slots that work with both SATA and NVMe M.2 drives. But there is still a lot of older desktop motherboards and laptops out there that are SATA or NVMe only. NVMe and SATA M.2 drives do look identical, and I'd note that the different lengths of these drives has nothing to do with their different interface. It's also important to note that all M.2 devices have slots or keys to prevent them being fitted into the wrong kind of M.2 slot. Specifically, M.2 SSDs can be either B keys, M keys, or both. Here, like all modern NVMe drives, this WD Black is M keyed, whilst, like most SATA drives, this Transcend is both B and M keyed. Finally, just to make sure everything is as clear as possible, let's finish this segment with a table indicating the different interfaces available in different SSD form factors. As we can see, 2.5 inch SSDs can have a SATA, U.2 NVMe, or SAS interface, while M.2 drives can be SATA or NVMe. Meanwhile, PCIe add in card SSDs are only ever PCIe NVMe, whilst M SATA or Mini SATA SSDs are only ever SATA, as their name suggests. Most SSDs store data in their flash memory chips using NAND logic gates. Two technologies are commonly used called floating gate and charge trap flash. In both of these, to write or program data, a voltage is applied to move electrons into a floating gate or charge trap layer. The presence of these electrons changes the resistance between the memory cell's source and drain electrodes, and this can be measured by passing a current between them, so allowing data to be read from the cell. To erase the cell, a voltage or field is applied to remove the electrons from the floating gate or charge trap layer. However, repeated program erase operations weaken the material the cell is made from, which results in electrons either escaping a floating gate or being retained in a charge trap layer. After a certain number of program arrays or PE cycles, it therefore becomes impossible for the cell to reliably function. The practical implication is that all SSDs can only sustain a limited number of data write operations before they fail. The technology in the first SSDs was called Single Level Cell, or SLC, 
and stored just one bit of data per memory cell. The cell was therefore only required to maintain two possible states of fully programmed or fully erased. However, today, most SSDs store multiple bits of data per memory cell in order to increase drive capacity at a reduced cost. Inevitably, this reduces the number of program array cycles an SSD can reliably sustain and also makes the drive operate more slowly. Therefore, when you purchase an SSD, you may wish to consider how many bits of data it stores per memory cell, as this will determine its speed and life expectancy. After SLC SSDs came multi-level cell or MLC drives that store two bits of data per memory cell, so requiring the cell to reliably distinguish four programmed states. Next came triple level cell or TLC SSDs, followed by quad level cell or QLC. Today, manufacturers including Intel and Toshiba are working on penta level cell or PLC SSDs, although these are yet to arrive on the market. The program array's life expectancy for any individual SSD varies significantly. But, as a guide, SLC drives can sustain up to about 100,000 program array cycles, MLC about 3,000 for consumer drives, TLC somewhere between 500 and 2,000, and QLC between 300 and 1,000. Whilst these numbers may seem very low, it should be remembered that most users only write or rewrite data to a very small percentage of their drive on a daily basis. And so, even QLC and future PLC drives will work reliably for many years for the vast majority of users. Having just explained SLC, MLC, TLC, QLC and PLC, I thought it was important to finish off by saying a few words about how Samsung chooses to label its drives and its technical specs, because it can make matters slightly confusing. And this is because Samsung labels every drive it has as being MLC and then indicates the total number of bits stored per cell. So for example, here is a Samsung Pro drive, which is MLC, which Samsung labels as 2-bit MLC. That's not too confusing. But over here, we have a Samsung Qvo drive, which is QLC, but Samsung labels this as 4-bit MLC, 4-bit multi-level cell, which I suppose is technically correct if you just use multi-level cell to mean multi any number and then you define a number of bits stored alongside it. But uh, in the world where we've generally taken MLC to mean 2 bits per cell, that can confuse matters a bit. So here's a little table just to explain what Samsung does with MLC being 2-bit MLC, TLC being 3-bit MLC, QLC being 4-bit MLC, and presumably in time, PLC will be labelled on Samsung drives as 5-bit MLC. Over the past decade, SSDs have helped to make laptops lighter, more robust, and to have an improved battery life, as well as allowing computers of all kinds to boot more quickly and to benefit more generally from faster storage technology. If you want to know more about different types of computer hardware, you may want to check out some of the other videos on this channel, including explaining RAM and explaining PCIe slots. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.